Hello there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be painting a pretty basic landscape with a pretty intricate sky. Right now I'm sketching in the path that I'm going to take with this painting. Uh, I find sketching helps me to kind of just follow along and not get too loose. Now to protect myself from painting into that landscape, I'm going to go ahead and mask off the, uh, the land from the sky. A really cool trick I learned along the way was if you put two drops of dish soap into your water, when you're applying your masking fluid it won't ruin your brush and it'll actually peel off a little bit easier. So the tools I'll be using for this painting are going to be a three quarter flat wash, a size six round, a size zero round, a spritz bottle, and an optional heat gun. Uh, the colors will be up on the right of the screen. After you wet your paper, make sure there's no puddles kind of hanging around. Color tends to move real weird in those puddles, uh, and it can really kind of jack up your perspective. One important note, when you pre-wet your paper, make sure there's no puddles just lingering around. Make sure you're keeping everything in this first wash real soft. You don't want any hard lines in this first one. One thing that I find people miss on a lot with skies is not paying attention to the perspective of it. Uh, to me, this almost feels like a horseshoe shape, so all your clouds are going to kind of bowl out to the side of the paper. Pay attention to the direction of your clouds. Now we're going to dry that first layer and make sure that the colors are all set before we go back and re-wet. As long as your paper is dry and your colors are set, there should be no danger of re-wetting the paper and getting more color into it. Same color combos here. More blue towards the bottom of the sky, where it kind of darkens up towards the top. Now, if you find that your paper is drying pretty quick, you can always go back in with a damp brush, just make sure that you're not flooding those colors with a ton of water. This is going to create those weird blooms, it's going to make your picture look really weird. So when it comes to perspective with skies, your, your bottom of your sky is going to end up being a lot smaller shapes, while as everything closer to you, the top part of the sky is going to be bigger shapes, bigger clouds, bigger shadows.
I tend to work with a lot of blues and browns, so I'm a, a lot more comfortable mixing with those. Uh, but the more you paint, the more you learn you. And what ultimately comes out of this is your style, your color choices, your painting. Experience is the best teacher. Normally with skies, I try to maintain as much white space as I can. You can always take away from it, you can't always get it back. Gonna dry and let the color set again. Now we're going in with a little more harsher lines. This gets toned down with the spritz bottle a little later on, but this is kind of giving you the shape of those smaller clouds. Make sure you're utilizing that spritz bottle as it's going to soften up some of those hard lines you tend to get if the paper starts to dry. Getting a little bit darker in this last wash. I want these colors to kind of sit back still, but also have some vibrancy to them. And here I added a little bit of that yellow ochre, just to variate some of those lighter shadows. The heat gun is truthfully optional. If you have the patience, let everything dry naturally. Your colors will look a little bit better. All right, the sky is finished. I'm gonna remove that masking fluid and start working on the front line. You can leave a couple of those white specks on the paper as it shows highlights in the actual land. Uh, just make sure you're not leaving too much unpainted. This back hill is actually more towards the background, so you want to add cool colors and keep the mix kind of watery. That'll help it sit in the back.
cool texture trick is take some fresh water, fresh clean water, and splatter it onto your page while it's still wet. You'll see these blooms kind of create some texture right in the front. Get a little crazy and splatter some darks on there as well. Believe it or not, plain blooms dry really, really cool sometimes. Right here, I'm kind of just adding more cool to that back mountain to push it back into the background. This is going to separate that back hill to the front hill. From here on out, this is mostly wet on dry as you're putting in more details into these layers. If you find like you're painting a little too tight with the brush, loosen up on the grip and let the brush kind of dance across the paper. Remember this is all about suggestion. So this is pretty much just a part of my skies with JT hashtag on Instagram, uh, where a bunch of artists get together and try the same reference and kind of paint their own style for it. It's a whole lot of fun. You can meet new people, you can see new painting styles. It's just been it's been awesome. Now when it comes to the foreground, you really want to make sure you're mixing a pretty dark paint. All you're doing is bringing all those details more forward. Now right here, I'm just kind of suggesting more grass in the foreground. This was actually a really cool reference for color mixing uh, and perspective. The clouds had really good shapes to them, the colors had really cool and warm tones to them. And you kind of got to see the perspective from the front to the back. Always remember you do not have to paint in every single detail to the paint. Suggestion is huge in watercolor. Make sure you're using it to your advantage. Use all the layering to your advantage as well. Uh, anything that you're pushing forward is going to have more layers, it's going to have more darks. I really appreciate you stopping by to check out the tutorial. If you like what you see, check out the other videos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I will have more content soon.